As soon as I found out I was fighting Mary Jo is when I was like, all right, let's, you know, let's train hard and let's, let's get this done. She's an undefeated fighter. I know I'm up against somebody very, very tough mentally and physically. You know, she has that confidence and she's a strong fighter. I think tonight's fight's gonna go my way. We've been preparing for it, doing things that need to be done in order to cut off the ring, um, go over her jab because it's weak. The first three rounds of the fight, I'm not really like putting too much anticipation on it. I don't want to be ex expecting something and then it be totally different. We have our game plan and we're going to try and execute, but um, in this sport you have to be 100% offense and 100% defense at all times. I don't really know what she's going to do coming out. That's why we prepare for everything. You know, she could try to feel me out a little bit or she could come out with that straight left hand. The few tricks that she has, we've got it covered. The work is done. And it's just reaction and, and going out there and doing what I've, what I've been working for. Fighting in front of my hometown is great. I think it's good pressure. It is pressure. Um, you know, a lot of people here, they have to work quite a few hours just to buy a ticket to come to this fight, and I, I want to make it worth it when they buy tickets because they really want to see it. So it does put some pressure, but I think it's good pressure. There's no added pressure fighting in her hometown. Wherever the ring's set up, it doesn't matter if it's here or, or anywhere. You know, once I step through those ropes, a bomb could go off and I wouldn't know, you know, where I was. I'm, I'm that focused when I'm in the ring. It's going to be interesting. The crowd's going to have like a lot of energy sapped after that last fight, and they're going to have to suck it up because it's going to be an amazing one coming up right now. Mary Jo Sanders, the queen of Detroit, undefeated, 25-0, and 0, eight knockouts. Making her way to the ring right now. There's her trainer, manager, Jimmy Malo. Much has been made of the fact that she'll, of course, be facing a crowd that will be a little antagonistic to her, but she feels she'll be able to put it out of her mind. She's a superb athlete who has excelled in a number of different sports. And for her to be undefeated at this point in women's boxing is extraordinary because most women are not when they have over 20-some fights. And she's not exactly fought setups either. Nope. So it's going to be interesting to just see what she could do. She came in at 152 and a quarter and said she skated into the weight. Had no problems, eating a lot. And had great sparring with Damon Fuller, a left-hander who is a male pro, good, solid male pro, who sparred with her the whole time. She feels that will make her able to handle Holly Holmes' left-handed stance. By the way, much like Garside, she's coming off sort of a semi-unprecedented seven-month layoff. And we'll see if that makes it rusty. And now this crowd's starting to get it up for... Oh, they're going to go wild here. And Holly Holm always does this jumping dance on the way into the ring. And uh, I guess just to get her legs going. She just loves to dance on the way in. She's an energetic fighter. She starts that energy at this point. And she's a fighter who relies on movement. As I said, a kind of a herky-jerky, uh, difficult style to fight. She will use all of this 20-foot ring, but she will be punching while she does it. This everybody on their everybody on their feet here in Isleta Casino in Albuquerque. Holly very familiar with this ring. And as we said, Mary Jo Shanders, very bold move. To finally get this fight made, a much anticipated fight, a very hard to make fight, and it took Mary Jo Sanders leaving Detroit and coming to Albuquerque. But we're going to get our official introductions right now from Benny Ricardo. And now, ladies and gentlemen, finally, time to crown before your very eyes the best pound for pound female fighter in the world. From the Isleta Casino Resort, Frescast Productions presents live on Integrated Sports Pay-Per-View, finally, Holmes versus Sanders, fighting for the IFBA Junior Middleweight title, 10 rounds, supervisor in charge, IFBA President Judy Kulis. Also presenting at the WBA Award, Sue Fox. Tonight's fight. Will be fought under the auspice of the Isleta Boxing Commissioner, Commissioners David Anzara, Michael Hohola, Scarlett Lento, Inspectors Larry Casillas, Patrick Casillas, Dan Wilkinson, Physicians at Rickside, 
Dr. Jose Sterling and Dr. David Macias, the timekeeper, Anita Sanchez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet your judges from Arizona, Joe Garcia, from California, John Shorley, and from Chicago, Mario De Fiore. And when the bell rings, the man in charge will be Kenny Bayless. And now, finally, it is time. And let's meet your combatants, starting with the challenger in the red corner. She weighed in at 152 and one quarter pounds. She comes to us from Detroit, Michigan, packing Motown hits. She comes to us with a perfect record of 25 wins. Eight wins by way of knockout. She is the four-time world champion in four divisions, the IBA middleweight title holder. Ladies and gentlemen, here is K.O. Mary Joe Sanders! And in the blue corner, she is the IFBA junior middleweight cha champion. She will be defending her title. She has also been a six-time world champion in three divisions. The WIBA, the IFBA, the IBA, the WBC, WBA, and GBU welterweight title holder. She weighed in at 150 and one half pounds from Albuquerque, New Mexico with a record of 21 wins, one loss. Center, ladies. Okay, trunks are okay here. Trunks are a little high, so anything on the belt will be considered a clean punch. Now, now, ladies, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to caution you: keep the fight clean at all times. Protect yourself at all times. And what I say, you must obey. Good luck to both of you. Touch gloves. Thanks, Touch up. Appreciate that. Yeah. That was a stare off. <laughs> Yeah, sort of unprecedented for Holly yeah. Holm. I, I, I haven't seen that many with Mary Jo, but I've seen a lot of Holly's fights. And we, we take a look at the tail of the tape. Uh, a, a height and reach advantage for Mary Jo Sanders. She would like to make the most of it, but by facing this left-handed style, that will negate some of those advantages. We saw Charlie Sanders, by the way, in the crowd, the dad of Mary Jo Sanders. The all-pro tight end from the Detroit Lions, and this young lady has athletic pedigree, and she comes right after Holly Holm to try and get to her. And I'll tell you, I'll say it right now, Al. Mary Jo Sanders told me that she's not going to chase Holly Holm around the ring, that she will have other ways of stopping her and cutting off the ring. So we're going to see if that's something that she actually employs. And she's coming out very fast here in the first round. Well, she has to go after Holly Holm. So there's the right hand. But Holly Holm will want to give her movement left and right. She is, Holly Holm is just constant movement in the ring. I never saw a fighter before a fight move as much as she did. And she's fighting a lot more aggressively here, coming right in than I've seen her in the past. Well, you know, Holly Holm, when she does that, when she stops and throws all those combinations, it's like that offense is her defense. It's very hard for people to, to land. Walking in, though, on a couple of Mary Jo Sanders shots right now. Holm studying her a little tentative here as we're very fast first minute of this fight. You know, Mary Jo Sanders thinks one punch will change things. She is the bigger fighter. She is probably the more powerful. She thinks that if she lands one punch, it will significantly change this fight. We'll see. And Holly Holm, of course, coming up in wait to fight her. Right now, she is chasing her, though. Finding herself in a corner. Holly Holm tagging off on Mary Jo Sanders with 30 seconds to go in the first round. Holly Holm is a fascinating fighter to watch. She landed all those punches and said, okay, I'm going to go back out and do what I do now. I'm going to run me. around this okay. ring and make her come to me. Interesting how everything just went into slow motion. Yeah, well, Mary San Jill Sanders trying to figure out how to attack Holly Holm. It is not an easy task. No. Good left hand by Holm. Stop, stop, stop. The second round. Very tough first round to call. Yeah. 
Holly Holm, you know, has a style that is so different and unique. She runs at you, throws a bunch of punches, then she'll run around the ring, then she'll land a counter punch. I mean, it's just a very difficult style to fight against. Mary Jo Sanders got a lot of uh, southpaw sparring for this fight with Damian Fuller, and yet I'm not seeing her throw right-hand leads as her, she seems to still want to set things up with the jab. Well, she wants to get to the left, and she there's the hook, which I also think is a very effective weapon against the lefty. She said, I moved to the left so much, when I got out of bed in the morning, I got out on, on the left <laughs> side. So that was a great line, but during this fight, she's really not moving to the left as much as, as I would think she would be. She's allowing home. You see, you want the left, you want to keep your left foot outside the right foot of a southpaw. And, and Sanders is not doing that all the time. You see the footwork there. And she's doing what she said she wouldn't. She obviously is chasing and, and running after Holly right you now. You have to go to Holly home, but the, the idea is you, you want to cut the ring off and not chase her, and that's difficult to do. But what would happen if you wanted her to come to you? What if you don't chase her? Well, I, you could stand in the ring and make her do it. And, 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 and certainly we've seen that ploy used by others. We should point out also that all the judges neutral from Tucson, California, and Chicago. So there will be no home cooking for Holly Holm in terms of the decision here. These judges from all around the United States. Very level playing field now. So there will be, as you mentioned, there'll be no excuses. Stop, stop, step back clean, step back. Holly Holm though, having a very good round and really making Mary Jo Sanders work and chase. It's not that Holm is landing that many punches, but no. she is landing what's being landed, like that straight left hand. Time! Check it out. Well, we start round number three, a great direction from Mike Winklejohn between rounds. And there we go right now. Holly Holm, of course, she's the one in the green and white. Multi-striped silver shorts. Mary Jo Sanders, and Sanders really having a difficult time right now doing what she said she was trying to do, which is cut off the ring and run it again out. We've said the three different fights tonight, easier said than done. Left hook landing there a moment ago by Mary Jo Sanders. She needs to find that one punch that will get in and a power punch that will change things. Now her trainer and manager, Jimmy Lalo, is absolutely convinced she's going to win by knockout. He feels she's too strong for Holly Holm and will get to her eventually. And, of course, we're very early in this fight. But the Holm le straight left hand, like that one, has gotten in. Well, I've watched a lot of fighters look for that one punch that was going to turn things yeah. around and take the legs away from Holly Holm, and nobody's been able to do it. You're 100% right, and she, when she's a rolling dervish like this, Holly Holm, it's very tough to attack her. She has a, a unique style, and that's the understatement of the decade. And at a certain point, oh, fighters no, no, get into no, no, crazy no, no. frustration. I watched okay, it with hey, Anne-Marie Saccarato when I was here, and it be she became a very frustrated fighter during that fight. And they take you out of your game plan, and next thing you know, it's the end of the 10th round, and you just lost the decision. And, you know, we, we mentioned the fact that she's coming up in weight and that presumably Sanders is the stronger fighter. But if, in fact, Holly Holm, who just landed a great jab, can deal with the power of Sanders, this is going to be a very difficult fight for Mary Jo. Sanders extending a lot of energy, throwing those punches from outside and missing, too. And that's another thing. Fighters that fight her miss a lot, and they get fatigued very early. So we come to the end of the third. Good round for Holly Holm. Um, in a mixed martial arts match, trains at the same gym as Holly Holm and happens to be her boyfriend. And Mike Winklejohn trains him as well, along with Keith Jardine, another fine UFC boxer. Well, they're keeping it all in the family. And, and Al, you right now, as I saw the scorecard go by there, you've got a shutout for Holly Holm. I do, but I'll, you know, there might be a round in there that Mary Jo won, and, the, and these rounds are difficult to score. But I thought arguably she won the first on aggression. She but, could easily. But certainly Holly Holm here in the next two. And I think enough can't be said also as I take a look at this room right now where there's not a seat available. 
for the amazing promotion that's gone on behind Holly Holm. And I think arguably you'd have to say there's no other fighter yeah. in the United States that has this sort of following right now. Certainly, not a, certainly not a female fighter. And, um, it's a big part of who she is. There's a nice right up to now the win. That's when Mary Jo Sanders has her against the rope, she's got to make it work. In that case, Holly Holm threw a lot of punches and got herself out of the corner. And that's the thing about Holly Holm that's important. When, she see, when, when you trap her, she throws punches. She doesn't just try and get away. She's, she's nailing Sanders with some big shots. Under a minute to go in the fourth, and Alec couldn't agree with you more. When Sanders has you trapped like that, and you can't, she can't take advantage of it, when is she going to take advantage of it in the fight? And, you know, one of the issues that Mary Jo Sanders is having in this fight is hand speed and foot speed what right stop, now. Stop. We know she's the bigger fighter. We presume she's more powerful. But she has not been able to get her punches off as well as she might. Nice right hand by Sanders. And let's go to something we discussed in the open. It's probably very good for Holly Holm that she didn't take advantage of coming in this fight at 154 pounds. She showed up at 150. She probably still weighs 150, maybe even less. And, and I would say maybe... Mary Jo Sanders is over 160 pounds at this point. Speed is what, is yeah, speed is what home wants in this fight. So far, it's helped her. But Sanders landing some nice right hands now. Oh, no, 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 let her up. Okay, listen, you got to relax. That's your problem. Mary Jo Sanders going after. Now, there was the left hook, which is a very good punch. Now, here, though, she's not cutting off the ring. She's just kind of going after Holly Holm, chasing after her and not cutting the ring off. But there were some good punches landed by Mary Jo Sanders in that last round, especially here at the end of the round. Some right hands that got in. Well, as we mentioned, between rounds, Jimmy Mollo very happy with what he saw that round. I still thought it was a very close round. It but was. Whether she took the end of it, who knows? You know, these women are uh, Mary Jo Sanders 5-0 in world title fights. Holly Holm 10-0. Someone's streak will probably come to an end. They've had some common opponents in two of the three. Shadina uh, Pennybaker and Trisha Turton picked Mary Jo Sanders to win this fight, while Chevelle Hallback was kind of non-committal. Watch your heads, ladies. Watch the heads. Kenny Bell is already worried about the heads coming together. He had issues out, with that out, earlier out, in out. the evening in another fight. Stop! And Holly. that's something you don't see a lot of right now. A clinch in the middle of the ring in a Holly Holm fight. And Mary Jo Sanders, again, as you pointed out Earl, last round, out, not able to take advantage of when she finally gets her inside. Holly Holm doing a lot of holding in there. Nice body work by Holm. She... She got hit with a good right hand, though, did Holly out. Holm. And there's a little mouse underneath the left eye of Holly. Good uppercut on the inside. Now learning how to fight on the inside of Sanders, letting her hands go. Holm continues to be on that bicycle, lateral motion, moving. Not sticking the jab out as much as no. she was earlier and in the I, fight. And there's a subtle stop, change. Stop, stop, Holly Holm is allowing herself to be kind of cornered a little more near those ropes. Just a smidge less movement from her. Sanders not throwing anything here at the end of the round. And I just I say that beautiful right hand lead by Sanders. Perhaps her best punch of the fight. She's had her moments in this round. Is it enough for Mary Jo to win it? Tough rounds to score. Yeah, very good. Point. Mary Jo Sanders has landed some good right hands. That was her best of the fight. And more importantly, she worked on the inside when Holm got in. Second half of a scheduled 10 rounder, the IFBA junior middleweight title at stake. Mary Jo Sanders, she's in the striped shorts. Green and white, that would be Holly Holm. Nobody's been on the floor, and a very tough fight to score, Al. Yes, it is. Good straight left hand by Holm. You mentioned that Holm's jab has not been as active in this match as we would expect. She's come out very aggressively here. I have it a very close fight. You could go either way with this. these rounds. They're very, very difficult. I have Holm up 48-47 at the end of five, but... 
Very narrow margin. That's the way and, I have it as well. But I got to tell you, we, we need to talk about that right hand workout, lead because that workout, Mary Jo workout, Sanders workout. threw workout. near the end of the fifth round. I really believe that's the ticket and that she shouldn't be throwing the jab. But the right hand lead was just beautiful and really stopped Holly dead in her track. Well, she got it in, but the problem is she's got to put herself in position to throw these punches. She has to move to her left, cut Holly Holm off, and then be in a position to throw, whether it's the lead or the left hook to the body that will stop her from moving. It's another thing. Mary Jo Sanders hasn't thrown that left hook downstairs that stops the movement of the left-hander. With all that, she may well have won the last two rounds, and she's certainly becoming a, a better aggressor in this match. Work, work out. However, inside right there, Holly out punching her four to one when they got inside. And Holly Holm lands a lot of body punches when she gets inside. Stop, stop. Holly Holm has right, one of the right. most unorthodox styles I have ever seen in boxing. And it, that's what makes her such a difficult fighter to fight. You know who she reminds me of, and no pun intended on the name. Remember Keith Holmes, middleweight. Absolutely. Used to bounce like that. Big tall left hander. I had Paul Vaden fighting him one night. It was like fighting a kangaroo. Yeah, very easy That's all over you. This is a tough round here. It's uh, not a lot of activity. A lot, a lot of punches landed by the woman. Holly may be just a little busier. Yeah. At the end of the round, Action on the inside. Mary Jo Sanders trying to land and, then ho and landing a right hand as Holly Holm kind of lunged in at her as she is wont to do. Nice little wealth under. <laughs> and I got to say this, as we start round number seven, Holly bouncing just as much as she was bouncing in the ring walk. Perpetual motion. You know, they felt that uh, Mary Jo Sanders, that they could work uh, off the weak jab of Holly Holm. And Holly jo Holm's jab hasn't been great. Oh, good left hand after Sanders landed a good right hand. So both fighters trading right now. Holly gets back on her bicycle, though. Mary Jo has her in good position right now. Kenny Bayless letting him fight out of it, too, and Sanders getting the better of that exchange. Good right hand by Mary Jo Sanders, her second best punch, best punch in the fight, and she landed a combination. That's a hole. Kenny Bayless not letting him fight on the inside, though, Al. This is a seminal moment in this fight. Mary Jo Sanders has unloaded some power shots. She can't afford not to pick up the pace here and keep the pressure on Holly Holm. Landed a right-hand lead just before you started your comment, too. Holly Holm, while she's dancing right now, not throwing a lot of leather. Mary Jo Sanders wanted to land the uppercut on the inside. She's not throwing that punch as much as she would like. And How right, do you feel, though, about Bayless breaking them up? Well, I think even Kenny, when they're not in a clinch. Yeah, I think Kenny might let them fight a little bit more on the inside. It was certainly, Mary Jo Sanders certainly wants that. Another good right hand by Sanders, partially blocked by Holly Holm. Now, the bigger punches landed by Sanders in this round. Maybe more of them by Holly Holm. It's hard to tell. Under 20 seconds to go here in the seventh. Holm lunging in. Less you, movement from home. No jab. Nobody can spell jab this round. Good finish for Sanders. It got rough in there. Mary Jo Sanders really made Holly Holmes feel her punches in that last round. And right at the end of the round, they wailed away, and Kenny Bayless got in between them. But it was a, a round in which this young lady landed. All right, we're starting the eighth round. Again, this is scheduled for 10. And when it comes to 10-round fights, Holly Holm has been the 10-round distance 10 times, as opposed to Mary Jo Sanders six times. And oddly enough, as much as she's eight years younger, her pro career started a year earlier, back in 2002, January of 2002. You know, Jimmy, and I have this as a very close fight with home maybe one point up. Jimmy Mallow, you know, saying to Mary Jo that she has to really sweep these rounds. I don't know if that's the case. You know, we have to, we mentioned again that all the judges are neutral judges coming from all around the United States. Sometimes they're influenced, though, by the crowd noise, and this crowd certainly on Holly Holmes' 
bandwagon. I've sat it exactly the same way you have it out right now. 67-66 for home. A lot of rounds. Could have gone the other way if you're scoring on aggression as opposed to volume of punches. It's very difficult, you know. And What about all those body punches Holly Holm has thrown and landed? They're not monstrous, but they're landing. There's another right hand by Sanders. And when she can land that right hand lead, it really slows Holm down. But I'll tell you what hasn't happened in this fight. There hasn't been that one punch, and there were two or three that could have been it, that has really changed this fight completely for Mary Jo Sanders. Look out, look and out, has taken out. Holly Holm completely out of her game. That hasn't happened yet. Well, Bayless letting him fight on the inside look now, look but Mary Jo not taking advantage of it. There's the uppercut from Mary Jo. That's what she wants to land in there. And now Kenny getting in at a, again at maybe an inopportune time. But also Holm, very, she's brilliant at smothering you very on the inside. Good. Yes. She's, she's one of the most clever boxers, male or female, anyone will ever see in the ring. And I think we gotta, gotta give a lot of credit to that to Mike Winklejohn, too. Yep. Close round. This is a tough one. Stop, 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 stop. Well, as we start the ninth, Al, I don't know how you're seeing it, but from my vantage point, a momentum shift in favor of Mary Jo Sanders. I had her taken the last two rounds. Yeah, I think it's close. I think it's a dead even fight, actually, at this point. I don't know if that's the way the judges are seeing it. Mike Mollo looking in his corner trying to urge Mary Jo on, feeling the concern about how this may be scored. Again, we emphasize three neutral judges, one from Chicago, one from Tucson, one other one from California. Whoa! Takedown! That was dangerous because that could have created an injury. We hope it didn't. Mary Jo got the worst of that spill, I think, from just okay. from the way no she wrestling. landed. Keep it clean. No wrestling. There we go. Uh, Kenny Hurry Bell up. is trying to get control back over this fight again. But, yes, I, I agree with you. Holly Holm just kind of bounced up. <laughs> you know, Mike Stop. Mahler asking Stop. for Stop. combinations, but Mary Jo's not been able to throw combinations. She's landed singular punches when she lands them. Look out. Look out. Holly Holm will all but abandon her jab. Yeah, I agree. And, and she's been a little less active with some of those combinations in the last couple of rounds. Doesn't want to lay on the ropes right now against Sanders. Look out, look out. 45 seconds to go here in the ninth. Little uppercut landed by Mary Jo Sanders on the inside. Look out, look and out, now look when, out, Holly look Holmes, out. when Holly Holm comes in with those little rushes, a little less effective than she's been, although she landed a nice uppercut there. One of the few jabs that landed tonight from Mary Jo out, Sanders. Mary, Mary, Holly Holm on a 14-fight win streak, hoping stop, stop, that that stop. is not snapped. Of course, Mary Jo Sanders has never lost as a pro. Oh, big right. Punctuates the end of the 10th. Mary Jo Sanders, excuse me, the end of the ninth, trying to steal this round. Stop, stop. Another tough round of score, huh? I'll say. <laughs> An awkward moment in the last round. They both ended up going backwards. Mary Jo lost her balance, and uh, they both went down. close fight. Al, I am going to be so curious to see how this is scored. Well, and Mary Jo Sanders stop, going out to make stop, an no academic pressure, by no really pressure. controlling this 10th round. She just landed some really good shots. An urgency on the part of her, although Holly Holm lands a good straight left hand. Yeah, it's going to be very, very difficult to think of how it will be scored. 
Subtle momentum shift starting in the seventh round towards Sanders. I've got her taking seven, eight, and nine and pulling out in front by one point. 86-85 going into the tenth. Watch the head. You could easily score it that way, and I, you know, this look tenth round is going to be out. important look for this decision. Make no mistake about it. She's landed more clean punches, Mary Jo has, in the last part of this fight. Holly Holm Look is out. looking, truthfully, just a little bit fatigued at this juncture. Big uppercut by Sanders. That was one of her better punches. Holly walking into shots that I've never seen her walk into before also. Fight certainly living up to its expectations here. Can Holly Holm dig down deep right now with under a minute to go in 10th? Take this 10th round, which may be very crucial to keep her win streak alive. Now she landed some shots there, but Mary Jo Sanders is, is landing better on the inside than she has in the last few rounds. Sanders now with her back to the ropes, but Holly Holm not throwing anything on the inside. And as I say that, she lets off a little two-punch combination. Not much other punches right now. You know, Mary Jo Sanders never in this fight pushed Holm off of her like stop, stop. she just did a moment ago. Had she been doing that a little more, she would have given herself room to punch. What was that? An odd movement from Holly Holm, to say the least. Look out, look out. Left Good hand, left by, hand by Holm. That was her best punch. Of, oh, <laughs> she's doing the Superman punch. That's from oh. MMA. The question is, is that enough to take the last round for Holm? With those last punches, if indeed it was, I've got the fight even. Judge Joe Garcia had it 98-92. Judge John Schlor had it 98-92. Judge Mauro Di Fiore had it 97-93. All for your winner by unanimous decision. And still the IFBA Junior Middleweight Champion, the Preacher's Daughter. Well, Al, not one of our great nights in terms of agreeing with the judges. Three on the other one. I think that, that you can make the case for Holly Holm winning this. And she does her patented backflip because she had grounds in which she did a very, very good job. Besides, again, neutral judges from all around the United States. Occasionally, Mary Jo Sanders got the right hand in. And she pressured Holly Holm at times. This was the awkward moment in round nine that, thank goodness, did not create an, an injury. And then, in the 10th round, Mary Jo going after her, but it was not to be enough. As Holly Holm and her boxing skills and ability got the job done, and she ended up with the decision win and an emotional moment for her. And there are the belts, and our Benny Ricardo's got Holly Holm. We're going to see what she thinks of her performance. Take it away, Benny. And now, Holly Holm, finally. It's happened. How do you feel? I'm excited. I'm just trying to take it all in. That was an awesome performance. And I remember doing your very first fight. You were late for the weigh-in. And you got fined before you ever threw one punch or took one punch. Boy, you didn't think boxing would end up quite this where you are now. I just figured, you know, down deep, I never fight for the money, so whatever. <laughs> in that fight, I thought, they take my money. I still train so hard. I'm going to go out there and fight, and I'll show them. <laughs> And Mary Jo Sanders, a very tough opponent, a very game opponent, came to fight. She came to fight. But when everybody talks about Holly Holm, they talk about punching angles. They talk about the great footwork. How did all that get started for you, Holly? This guy right here, my coach. Um, best coach in the world. And uh, I've been from the beginning. And, uh, you know, I see a lot of fighters go from trainer to trainer. And I've just had faith in him, and it shows he's had faith in me and put all that hard work into it, so I thank him. An awesome performance. Arnie and Al, I got before me the best female pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Well, Al, I think Benny gave us our lead-in to, we talked about that you and I earlier in a private session about the heir apparent to the pound-for-pound. -pound. never Listen dealt with anybody. Like so professional. She's a great person, uh, a great fighter, a great champion, and I just want to give her all the thanks, and I can't even start with all my friends and family. My brother's over here, my dad, my mom, my Holly's homies up here. You see them all. Show them the shirts. 
Show them the shirts. See that, all these homies? Right here in front, all these homies. Those are my best friends. And how, most of them are in the back, you know, $50 seats. So thanks, you guys. I love you all. And my sponsors, Define Fitness, Los Vatos. You guys are really good to me. Fun evening. Great to work with you. I'm glad I could participate in this great night of women's boxing. Uh, it lived up to everything we said it would be. For Al Bernstein, I'm Arnie Tsokia Rosenthal. Good night, Carrie. I'm coming home.